So uh, this lecture is uh, going to be on the uh, basics of Endgame. Um, I've done other uh, Endgame lectures in the past, which uh, really go into uh, you know specific uh, counting in terms of exact point values. Um, but uh, that can oftentimes get very very technical and very very difficult at times, even for. Uh... <laughs> But that can get very, very difficult and very, very technical at times, uh, even for Don players. And, uh, you know, even professionals spend huge amounts of time in their games uh, counting exact point values in endgame. So uh, today we're going to look at a little bit more uh, foundational aspect. Uh, you know, more of the, the foundations of an uh, endgame. You know, how do we determine which, uh, which general areas are the most important? So uh, perhaps at a future date, we will uh, look into exact counting in terms of, uh, you know, how to determine what is a five-point endgame move versus a, a six-point endgame move and, and that type of thing. But uh, no specific calculations. We're not going to be doing uh, exact calculations in this lecture, no. Uh, well, maybe some, but uh, not particularly. Oh, don't worry. So uh, if there's a substantial interest, though, I might end up doing a, a few endgame lectures uh, in a row uh, in a series. So uh, let me know how uh, you thought this one was. We might uh, move it into a specific counting because, uh, yeah, corners are very deceptive. So so foundations of endgame. First of all, uh, a few valuable principles to remember in uh, Endgame. So uh, first off, unlike uh, most other parts of the game, Endgame there is uh, basically one correct path, in theory at least. In theory there is one move that is, is mathematically, categorically the best move. And every other move is, uh, at least in some way or another, inferior to that move. And so that's, that's the principle you need to start with. In that, uh, you know, in, in the mid-game, in the opening, we can say, oh, well, maybe this move is best, maybe that move is best, I don't know. And, you know, it's debatable, even among professional players sometimes. Some mid-game or opening moves can be very, very debatable in terms of what the best move is. But in endgame, it's very, very, uh, uh, it's a lot more clear. Well, it, it's clear what it is, but finding it out is very, very difficult and is a very difficult skill to master. So th that's the first thing. The second thing is when uh, calculating a Yosei move, either for exact value or for uh, just even to uh, approximate its value, one of the key things that you have to do is to uh, compare it. Uh, to compare it against your opponent's move. So let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, that principle with uh, this problem here. This is a uh, uh, a Joseki that many of you are probably familiar with. And obviously there would be stuff going on in the other corners. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to look at this. And then we're going to assume later on in the game that uh, the position has been uh, played out so it's you know pretty secure for both sides. There's no chance of uh, anyone doing any kinds of invasions and living. You know, th 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 There's nothing else that can be done except for the end game here. And so what I mean by when you compare both sides, when you're looking at how valuable a move is, not only if you're white, you have to look at, you know, I play F2, and then my opponent plays G2, and then I play E2. And that's just one part of it. But then the other part is you also have to compare that against black getting E2, and then white defending a D2, and then uh, black defending again here. And so you need to compare them one against the other. Ah, so that's uh, that's uh, we're gonna get to uh, Sente versus Gote in a second. Don't worry, we're gonna be coming back to this problem with uh, uh, more detail. Don't worry. So uh, the third important concept is uh, uh, something we'll go into in a second, which is uh, two particular things. Everyone is very familiar, I'm sure, with uh, the concept of Sente and of Gote, and those are the two basic uh, things to know. But from there, there's also two more uh, uh, variations, I guess, on those two concepts that are, are very important. Uh, well, actually, three. First off, there's a double sente, which is uh, pretty simple. You know, it's a move that uh, either side, that whoever gets the move first, will uh, have sente. And I'm sure most of you are pretty familiar with the, the most classic uh, double sente situation, which is uh, something along these lines. And obviously, if white gets the move first, he's going to take this point. 
and he's going to end in Sente. And if black gets the move first, he's going to play this way and end in Sente. And, uh, you know, that's not difficult to understand. But uh, the two other concepts we're going to go into in a lot more detail because they're very important to understand, but they're a little more difficult to get at first if you're not familiar with them. So the other two concepts are first, reverse sente, and then second, gote with a sente continuation. And I don't know if there's a fancy word for the second concept, but if there is, I don't know it. So let's, uh, let's look into each of these. First of all, uh, a reverse sente move. So uh, this, is a, this is a good situation to look at. So this is a Joseki that I think uh, many of you are familiar with. White stars off in the corner, black approaches, white pincers, and uh, black goes into the corner. I'm sure many of you have uh, seen this countless times in your games. So we're going to uh, uh, consider this Joseki, but with one additional move that white already has a stone at uh, h2. And so now, a very big Yose point, a very big endgame point, of course, is uh, you know this area, the, this area on uh, the bottom right here. And who gets to play here makes a big difference in terms of counting. And this is one of those critical concepts that you need to concentrate on in your games that uh, countless times people don't. So first of all, let's see what happens if, uh, if white gets there first. Well, white is going to, well, let's see. White is going to play B, uh, B3. Black, of course, is going to defend. And then white, of course, is going to defend. And so endgame requires a lot of reading. And so the question here is, uh, does black need to play another move to live? Because reading is critically important. That, that, def that defines a lot of Yose problems. Does black need another move? Any ideas? We have uh, one vote for yes, two votes for yes, another vote for yes. Yep, that's uh, pretty much the unanimous view, and that's right. Black does need another move. So, we can conclude... <laughs> no, actually, there's uh, there's not really a co, actually, Rukas. It's just dead if, uh, if Black doesn't do that. <laughs> right. So, in this situation, B3 has been sente for white. If white takes it first, white not only gets the good yose move, but he also ends in sente. That's that's really valuable, making free points. I mean, uh, who could who could not want to make more points and keep sente? Now let's compare. If black takes the move, sente is uh, the initiative or the ability to choose to, to play the next move. Basically, whoever's turn it is at the end of a, a given sequence has sente. So if we compare, black is going to go here, and then white is going to go here, and then black is going to defend. And this is pretty simple. But uh, assuming, of course, that uh, white has some kind of formation over here that uh, black isn't going to immediately invade, this is uh, not naturally sente. It's not like white has to play another move here or the entire world collapses. You know, white is, uh, white's okay here. Well, yeah, there, there's Aji with the clamp, of course. And sometimes white can uh, play another move here, but uh, we can't say that this is necessarily sente for black. It's not. So this is sente for one side, for white, and gote for the other side. And in this situation, it is called reverse sente. And reverse sente is a critically important concept to understand in uh, in uh, playing your own endgame. Right, it, and this is a, an example of both, actually. So this is an example of reverse sente, and it's also an example of a gote move with a sente follow-up. So the original b4 move was gote. Uh, black will end after black b4, white b5, black b3, white can then play whatever move his heart desires. He doesn't have to play locally. But uh, we say that this is a gote with sente continuation because the original move was gote, but now black can do this 
and end in sente, which is really nice. So let's explain uh, each of these concepts. Right, so the important thing here with reverse sente is that there's a, a, an important concept in endgame which I guess you can basically compare to uh, virtual points or you know additional bonus points that you can uh, add when comparing. So you know if we just look at uh, uh, directly at the raw point values in terms of uh, comparing this uh, against uh, something like this. You know in terms of uh, just uh, the raw point value it's uh, <clears throat> we're not going to do exact calculations in this lecture but uh, we can say for the sake of argument that it's about uh, six or seven points difference roughly. But uh, in actuality, the value of this move is much more than six or seven points. Well, right, so we're, we're going to get to why it's more than six or seven points. But it, it, so in terms of physical points directly within the corner changing hands, it's about six or seven. However, in actuality, if a professional player were counting this, he would actually, or she, he or she would actually double the value of this particular situation for black to play in, or white, because it's a reverse sente move. Remember, ah, excellent question. Why would we double it? Well, if white gets to play here first, not only does white get these uh, B3 move, but he also gets sente. He gets sente to now play wherever he likes in the world. He gets another move to play where his heart desires. And uh, free, basically. Now if we compare, if black takes the move, right, is an, it's an approximation, right? The value of the sente is assumed to be approximately the same value as the initial move, right? It's, it's uh, so we're talking, you know, it's a uh, bonus points, I suppose you could say. So but when black takes b4, he is stealing this uh, sente move from white. White, when, uh, whenever you, I'm sure if some of you who have uh, read a lot of go books will hear uh, uh, the phrase that professionals use to say that uh, white has, or you know, white has uh, earned or white deserves these points. And uh, this, is a, this is a critical, uh, <clears throat> a good phrase to be aware of. Uh, in, in this particular corner, white has uh, earned, or white deserves, to play b3. Because he can take b3 in sente. So in theory, he can play b3 whenever he damn well pleases. It's his. You know, black has no right to it. Because white can take it in sente. And that means it's essentially free for white. So when black does steal it from white, not only is he changing the value of points in the corner, yeah, black is being a thief. Not only is he stealing the value of the points in the corner, He's also stealing White's free sente, which, as uh, uh, Naman Remen said, is uh, what we would consider similar, uh, a move probably similar in value. So this is the concept of reverse sente. So if you see a situation where there is reverse sente, and in your head you estimate that, well, maybe it's uh, six or seven points, you should uh, actually in your head uh, double your initial guess. Because reverse sente is a very, ah, <laughs> that's a very complex question. Very complex. We'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Don't worry. So the other concept which uh, this problem shows off is uh, gote with sente continuation. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so b4 is a gote move which uh, has a, uh, is a gote move itself. But unless white immediately plays c6, which he could, but then black has taken uh, b4 and sente, he's thrilled. But so, even though the initial move was uh, gote, it has this lovely move at a5 that is in sente. And this is a sente continuation for black. So when you're counting, not only do you have to look at the initial move, but if there's a sente continuation, you can actually add on the sente continuation because this, this once again goes back to the concept of deserving the points. Black can take this continuation at a4, or at uh, a5. Black can take this continuation whenever he likes in sente. I mean, there's no way for white to stop this move without, you know, without, uh, if, for black to uh, not have sente. 
after stopping this move. So uh, these two concepts are a little bit hard to grasp at first. Ah, yes. So yeah, so then it, uh, it's interesting. Uh, the, the two concepts, are reverse sente and gote with sente continuation, are kind of, uh, what's the word, uh, converses of one another. So yes, you're right. Uh, if white were to defend here, it would be indeed a reverse sente move, which would be pretty big for white. Which would be pretty big. But uh, remember, white is uh, using up his sente to do that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's don't worry, we're going to have more examples to uh, get on with it. You don't need to understand it uh, at this exact moment. We still have uh, another hour to go to uh, talk about them more. These are two very, very, very tricky concepts to get at first. And Yosei lectures are notoriously difficult to give because they can just be so stupidly, stupidly technical. So don't worry. So this is a, nope, wrong problem. So what we're going to look at now is a, a few, uh, what we're going to look at now is a few of my games, uh, which particularly stood out in my head because I made a lot of bad Yosei mistakes in these games. And so we're going to see if we can figure out uh, where all the stupid Yosei moves that I made were. Um, sometimes it was because the time limits were uh, fast. Sometimes it was because uh, I just wasn't thinking. You know, a lot of people, uh, myself included, make this very common mistake in Endgame. <laughs> No, so this, uh, so this game, first of all, when does Yosei begin is a, a question that's important in and of itself. And I want uh, anyone watching this lecture in your next game to uh, really concentrate on this fact and really you know, focus on in your head, has Yosei begun yet? And there's no absolute point where you can say that, uh, oh, Yosei has begun. Th there is no absolute point. It's really just a, a relative, uh, it's a, you know, it's, it's a, a relative thing. So I determined, uh, based on my estimation, that Yosei probably began right about here. You know, we can see that the mid-game is uh, pretty much over. The corners are sketched out, the sides are sketched out, the center is sketched out. Um, all we have left are these, uh, these border moves to play, you know, crunching into your opponent's area a little bit. Or, uh, right, so uh, yeah, so in this, in this little G area, there is a, a little bit of... Uh, uh, a little bit of open space, it's true. Ah, well, see, that's, a, an, I mean, that's a, an excellent question. Is it, uh, can we say that that area is settled enough for uh, Yosei to begin again? Ah, difficult question. You, you could argue, I suppose, that uh, mid-game fighting is still going on in this G area, but uh, both the, the groups on both sides are pretty solid, so I don't think anyone's going to be creating any floating groups or yeah, it's a, no, it's, it's a, so it's a complex question. So, then the question is here, first off, before we determine, you know, what the, the number one absolute uh, biggest move, what moves, it's Black's turn. And uh, so, first off, what is, oh, I was white in this game. So, the first question is, in Yosei, generally speaking, what kind of move should have the highest priority? Highest priority move. Yosei has just begun. Sente moves. You know, sente moves should have the highest priority. Of course, uh, and within sente, we can uh, even look at the double sente moves as having a, an even higher priority because, you know, double sente moves, of course, if either side gets it, it's sente, so they're very important. And exactly, you can do sente moves all around the board. Now, you should always remember, though, that uh, sente is a relative concept. There's no such thing as a move which, you know, your opponent has to respond to. In theory, they can ignore whatever move they, they, they damn well please. So, you know, it, it's always relative to what else is going on on the board, which is why you'll see professionals be very, very cautious and careful about the exact timing of their yose moves. Because what a move is what a move which is sente later on in the game is not so much sente earlier on. So the question now is, uh, let's consider what are, in general, what are the moves that should be in contention for the biggest move that black can play at this moment? What, what moves should be in contention? And feel free to give multiples if you'd like. So let's see, we have a, uh, oh, so yeah, what uh, moves are, uh, are candidates, are, are possible moves that uh, we should consider. 
as the biggest move. So let's see, we have uh, lots of options. We have F2, we have E18, we have uh, J, J17. Ah, oh, lots of good candidates. A6, S6. So remember, this question is what should we play first? What should it, we're black and we have to choose which move is the first move? Well, S10 is not going to live, so let's just ignore S10. But uh, <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> so these are all really interesting ideas. So let's uh, let's talk about a few of them. So F, of course, F is a great example of a uh, gote with sente continuation move. S6 is a great move to consider a gote move with a sente continuation. So S6 itself is a gote move because white's going to go here and then black's going to go here and then, uh, you know, black can uh, do whatever he likes or, or uh, white can do, I'm sorry, white can do whatever he likes. He can uh, play elsewhere. But black has this great continuation that he just goes here with. And so this is really big. So this is the the initial move at uh, c5 is gote, but it has a sente continuation, which you have to take into account. So no doubt s6 is big, but even though it has a sente continuation, the the original s6 move is gote, and a gote move is just about never bigger than a sente move, as long as that sente move. For as long, and this is important, as long as the sente move gains you points and, critically important, is not ajikeshi. Is not ajikeshi. It does not eliminate aji elsewhere. So at this point, we really don't have to worry about the ajikeshi concept as much. Ajikeshi is a destroying your own potential. Yes, uh, ajikeshi is a destroying one's own potential. Uh, we can talk about Ajikeshi in a bit. Uh, Google has, and uh, Sensei's library has all sorts of uh, topics on the subject. Not really that critical to uh, this lecture. So, uh, yeah, S17 is, of course, a monstrous, monstrous move. Um, those of you who have uh, uh, studied this move in uh, Yosei lectures before, just uh, who can give us a point value? What is the point value of S17? Of, uh, S17? Mm, not. 22 points, no. Yeah, about uh, 16 to 17 points. It's a huge move. And uh, now, if, if I wanted to go into explaining exactly why this move is uh, worth uh, 16 to 17 points, it's, uh, it's uh, basically a 15 to 20 minute lecture in and of itself. And uh, maybe we'll end up going into this in uh, the next lecture in the series. But for now, just trust me on uh, the fact that uh, S17 really is a 16 to 17 point move. <laughs> well, that one wasn't an audio one, and uh, I never posted that one. So, so without a doubt, uh, S6 and S17 are both huge moves, but they're not sente. I mean, if white wants to, white can ignore this move. Well, uh, go no, Gote isn't bad. I mean, obviously, no one's going to say that S17 is a horrible move at all. It's huge. But if you can take sente moves first and then still have sente to come back and play S17 after you've gained points elsewhere, isn't that better? So, so J17 is sente, yes. Uh, we'll talk about J17 in a bit, actually. There's a reason why I'm not a particularly huge fan of it. But uh, you, yes, S17 is sente, or J17 is sente. Yes. So let's uh, let's look at the the remaining moves. So E18 is an interesting choice. E18, yeah, yeah. E18 is pretty sente. If uh, hmm, yeah, it's pretty potentially painful for White if he doesn't respond to it. There's all sorts of very painful things that uh, black can do in terms of uh, pushing and, uh, you know, at the minimum this move in Sente, 
to threaten to disconnect and potentially uh, destroying iSpace with uh, this move. And this just gets very, very, very painful for white. So uh, I think white can't allow this to happen. So yeah, e e18 is a very good move. Now this is another important concept. Let's say black plays e18, and then white does respond because e18, you know, is a valuable sente move. Should so first of all, does black need to play another move to protect e18, and then second, should black play another move to protect e18? What, what, what's Black's thing now? Should, should he Black uh, play another move there? Should Black play somewhere else? Has E18 by itself been beneficial? What's uh, what's the situation? Not an easy question. What do you guys think? Ah, oh, one vote for uh, Black playing elsewhere. Another vote for uh, Black playing elsewhere. Ah, so this is a very interesting concept and not an easy one to grasp. So uh, let's uh, let, let's consider it for a moment. So let's assume that uh, Black plays elsewhere, but instead of you know the sente moves that we can look at, let's assume Black plays elsewhere a, a really big, you know, a really big gote move like this. And uh, now it's true, as all of you see. There is a clamp here, and the clamp does work. Uh, the clamp absolutely works here. Um, but uh, the question we have to ask now is, has, e it, what, has a E18 had any value? Assuming that uh, black plays very simply, and just does this, and then white needs to, of course, spend another move. And so now the question is, has E18 had any value? Ah, black can get d17 in sente, and black was, uh, yeah, black uh, can get d17, right, in sente-ish, and uh, black was able to uh, uh, play c18 in more sente-ish fashion. For example, if uh, white takes d18, and then black takes this move, now, uh, white does not need to really uh, spend another move. It's a, it's a subtle difference, but uh, when uh, black plays e18 now, assuming these corner moves don't mean anything, of course, if black plays e18 now, if black wants it to have any meaning, it's going to have to, black's going to have to spend another move. So it's, it's a subtle difference, but just playing e18 on its own does have some modest value. Not that much. It needs uh, it needs another move to really become valuable. Uh, it, it's only very minor right now. But uh, the fact that it's sente, even if it's only you know a one point gain or a two point difference, a small difference, that's enough as long as it's sente, and it is sente. So black, the correct answer is black can play elsewhere. So now we're we're looking for what next. So uh, going back to our uh, other options, we discussed uh, s6 and s17. The two moves right now are uh, F2 and A6. S17 is huge, but uh, still Gote, and there's but it's still Gote, and we still have Sente moves left to play. Well, it's not White's turn though; it's Black's turn. So. Uh, Ah, there, yes, exactly. After all the sente moves are used, then you take the super gigantic gote move. Yes, especially if that gote move is reverse sente or something else. So now our choice is between uh, F2 and uh, A6. So both of them are sente, and it's actually pretty difficult to say which is uh, necessarily the superior move um, to, to play first. I, however, would uh, probably end up voting for uh, F2. Hmm? A6, you mean? Why is A6 sente? Because bad things will happen if uh, white doesn't spend another move. Uh, A5 will get captured and uh, 
good size reduction. Yeah, yeah, for black it's sente, right, not for white. So interestingly, this would be another example of a reverse sente opportunity for white. If white were to take a7, so I mean, well, you know, sente is relative, so So in this particular case, if white were to take a7, a7 would be a reverse sente move because it's not sente for white, it's gote for white. But white has effectively stolen black sente move at uh, a6. So this, is a, this would be a potential opportunity for a reverse sente. Now this is reverse sente on a smaller scale. You know, it's not a huge reverse sente, but it does have some value, and it, uh, so, I, you know, I, I want everyone to uh, look very carefully for this kind of situation, because they appear all the time in games, all the time. But uh, going back to the situation at hand, in fact, in our game, black plays f2 directly, and it's pretty sente. I mean, if white doesn't play e2, my corner gets uh, effectively trashed. You know, in theory, I could not respond, but uh, it would be extraordinarily painful for me. So I uh, respond. It's a very good move, and I play e2. And so now we have a, a very interesting question about uh, whether black should spend another move to defend f2. And that actually is a very difficult question. Um, I think that black made a mistake here. Black did spend another move to defend it, and without a doubt, Black gained a, a fair chunk of territory. You know, no one can say that uh, G G3 is a small move. Not only did it gain Black points in this area, but potentially it could also gain Black a few more points in this area. Well, right, need is of course a relative question. So the question is, Black chose to play G3. Is there anything bigger he could have taken instead? Anything bigger? Yeah, S17 is uh, S17 is bigger. Yes. So if I were black, I would have played S17 because S17 is just a monstrous move, whereas G3 is just a gigantic move. But uh, the good thing here is that we're noticing which moves here are truly the biggest. Right. It's all sente in size. Yeah. Yeah. But calculating that size is very, very, very hard. <sighs> So, white as white, I now decide to take S17 for myself. It's a gigantic, gigantic endgame move. But it's uh, also, uh, no, is it sente? Is S17 sente? Does black have to respond to it? Will, will one of black's groups die if he doesn't respond? I don't think so. It's, don't get me wrong, it's a gigantic move. But S17 oftentimes isn't sente. Isn't, uh, isn't sente. I should. He should only if there is nothing else on the board bigger. So naturally, he would hypothetically defend at S18. So then the question is for him not to play S18. Is there anything bigger on the board? Well, he chose to play D18. He chose to play a D18 which is actually, uh, it looks, at first glance, it uh, looks a little bit small. But uh, actually, it's a, a pretty big move. In fact, it's a, a very big move, and uh, I made a bit of a mistake here by not playing it first. We're going to see why in a second. I made a very big mistake. S17 is a gigantic move. But the question is, If uh, white plays it first, or oops, if white plays it first and uh, black defends, well, first of all, how does black defend this? This is interesting. How does black uh, defend this move? <laughs> yes, e18 is the, the proper option. E18 is a slightly fancier move, but uh, yeah, it does the trick. So 
those of you who thought uh, D17 are correct in principle, that you need to protect that eye. And then something along these lines happens for uh, black to live. <sighs> but uh, E18 is actually a bit of a Yosei Tesuji. Because at first glance, it looks like black is just giving up a stone to white. But let's see what happens. On closer examination, however, Black has managed to seal his corner in Sente. So what Black was doing was he didn't like me getting that very much. So he took a d18, which is a monstrous move. For another reason, Black has a, a nefarious plan with his uh, d18 move that we're going to see in a second, and why Yosei is, and we're, we're going to see why Yosei is so stupidly complicated, and uh, why it's such an interesting move in a moment. So now I play a uh, S6 and <laughs> and the idea with S6 rather than a move like S5 is that I want to try and keep Sente. You know, the idea with this move, right, I'm, I'm threatening a monkey jump. And the idea is that I want black to play here to stop my monkey jump. You know, by comparison, if I just play S5 and then black plays this and then I play this and then black gets Sente to play wherever he likes. And I don't like that very much. You know, I want to try and keep Sente for myself. So on the one hand, S6, if he does go here, I'm black gets more territory. Hmm? Um, ah, was S6 a Gote with uh, Sente continuation move? Right, unless he was on it. So the question is, is the monkey jump Sente? And that's an argument in and of itself in this particular case, which uh, we'll get to later. So hold that question. So now we see the reason for Black's D18. This is a nefarious tesiji that uh, I had not seen and uh, angered me very deeply. And I was uh, winning by a fair margin in this game, and although I still ended up winning the game by a good chunk, this, this caught him up a good uh, 5 to 10 points. And we're going to see why Yosei is uh, so complicated in a moment and just how monstrous a move this uh, subtle little d18 was. So white has to respond here, and black cuts, and white ensures that he remains connected, and then white has to capture here. But then, black cuts, and cuts him off, and suddenly, this cutting point is looking really, really, really dangerous for me. So white has to defend the cutting point, Ah, uh, is G18 just cleaner by it itself? No. Because what does a uh, black do? Just uh, this now? No. It is uh, not cleaner. Because then white can do this. Hmm? Oh, then uh, what? Oh, then that? Hmm. I suppose, but, uh, hmm. uh, it's interesting, actually, an interesting question. Yeah, it's probably cleaner. Yeah, I like it. It's a good idea. Very good idea. Although, white can consider a uh, interesting fight, which is, I think, the reason black didn't want to do it, is that uh, this can get very complicated. And in actuality, black should have done this because this can get very tricky for both sides. Uh, it would uh, take a fair amount of reading to see who wins exactly. But uh, since white is winning, black should have done it this way and just made it a really complicated fight. But uh, we're not discussing fighting in uh, this lecture, so let's uh, get on with the end game. So black plays the safe way, and now I have to defend. And now... He plays this move, and uh, for white to live, I have to play this. And so look at all these forcing moves. Look at uh, all these gains that black has obtained for himself. From this single move, he's already gained himself multiple points. He's gained himself additional points in here. He's reduced me to only two points, and uh, he's strengthened himself on the outside. A huge number of benefits from... And he's kept Sente. And he's kept Sente. 
from all because of a subtle move like d18. And you know this just gives a peek into how deep Yose can be. And uh, you know seeing this out from initially playing d18 is a very very difficult skill. So now Black takes his free sente move uh, with the peep here, and then Yose uh, really gets uh, continuing from this point. So now the question is, uh, now we're at this point and it's Black's turn, and so what about now? What are the biggest uh, biggest Yose moves for Black to want to play? Ah, uh, yes, we still have a6, which is uh, just as relevant. a5, f5, both very big, but uh, yeah, a s5, s18, absolutely. Yeah, all uh, excellent choices for uh, very big Yosei moves. You know, one of the most important concepts in Yosei, which is oftentimes ignored, is just pure concentration. It is so easy to just uh, play a generic move or to just, you know, go with whatever your opponent is doing. But if you really focus on your endgame and you really focus every single move on asking yourself, you know, do I have to respond to my opponent's move? Can I play somewhere else? It's amazing how many points you can steal back in uh, endgame. I mean, just to give you an example, on your average uh, six stone handicap game that I play, uh, when we enter into Yose, I will uh, usually, and most uh, uh, four dons will, uh, in a six stone game on average if they're fairly good at Yosei they can end up making back uh, 15 to 20 points just in endgame and uh, you know it's uh, it's scary the amount of points you can make back when uh, you're playing endgame seriously and your opponent is just uh, playing whatever move he thinks might be okay so in actuality black played this move which I don't think is a uh, this is not a tiny move it's actually a, uh, we could call it a uh, gote with the sente continuation because he can continue on in sente by playing a j12 which is a sente continuation which uh, you know expands him by a little bit you know a few points worth in uh, the center can become his that uh, weren't his before and he can stop me from playing k12 which uh, would have reduced him so you know it's it's a really big move it's deceptive because it doesn't look that huge, but it's a pretty big move. We could call it a, a reverse sente move, because if I take uh, k12, you know, if I take k12, he's going to respond to it. I mean, black probably will respond to this move. This is a pretty big capture. At this point in the endgame, it's pretty big. So, yeah, it, but it's not sente, right. Black should have played the 100% sente moves first. Because, you know, I can't ignore them. I can't ignore black if he plays uh, if he plays E1. There's no way I can ignore this. You know, I can't let him capture D1. M my whole corner disappears. I have to spend another move. Uh, same thing here. I have to spend another move. So, uh, really important stuff. So, I now take the, knights, uh, the uh, monkey jump. Because the monkey jump sometimes is sente. And, uh, you know, seeing if the monkey jump is sente or not is pretty valuable. So black does a pretty standard defense. And now notice what black does. He concludes, you know, normally the black move here is a T2. But uh, he concludes that E1 is such large sente that there's no way I will play uh, S2 myself. And, and he's right. You know, he, he's correct in that uh, I won't dare to play S2 because E1 is just such powerful sente. And I have to respond. So he left a weakness knowing that I couldn't fix it, or knowing that I couldn't exploit S2 because uh, E1 was sente. And then he comes back to fix. And now this is another interesting situation. Now many players in this situation will immediately play uh, T4. And uh, sometimes that can be very good because there's this cut at T2. But you know, depending on the Yose, yeah, exactly, depending on the Yose in this point, is S2 really 100% Sente? I mean, does he have to play S2 or just his whole position collapses if he doesn't play S2? I mean, if he plays S2, you know, it's nice for white, but uh, black just goes there. And uh, that's all the damage that uh, white gets to do. And so that hurts and that stings, certainly. But uh, if there's big enough Yosei left, left on the board, it's uh, not a must. So for those reasons, I did not play T4 right now. I want to keep Sente. 
So f3 is a really good sente move, of course, which I'm sure many of you have played. And he has to respond to it. And then I take s18, which I think is a pretty sente. You know, he's not going to die if he doesn't respond to it. Yeah, keep in that sente. So this is, you know, one of those really difficult questions. Is it really sente? And that's, it's not a clear-cut answer. I mean, if he doesn't respond, is he just going to die everywhere? No. But his entire upper right corner is going to disappear, or at least most of it. So uh, he naturally does respond, because uh, S18 is just a huge threat to all of his territory. And so look what I've done with uh, S18. I've gained myself one or two additional points, and I've uh, reduced him a little bit more, too. So, you know, it's not a, a massive 20-point game swing, but I've just, you know, two or three, four points, I've uh, shifted the board, which is uh, potentially very, very important. Each stone you get stronger, the margins of your wins and your losses will just keep on getting smaller. Ah, that's a good question. Why not R18? Let's see. Well, if I do R18, and then he's going to play Q18, and then I'm going to play S18. And then black uh, can probably play elsewhere. Although, actually, it's kind of interesting here. Might not, well, yeah, black can probably play elsewhere. So, right, I might have a sente continuation. But in this particular case, S18 is just directly sente. And in general, if you have a choice between a move which is 100% sente and a move which is just a gote with sente continuation, hmm usually the sente move is right although we can discuss uh, we could have a really complex discussion on us uh, the, the there are some times when a gote with sente continuation might be better but uh, that's a very difficult subject so uh, let's uh, let's see where are we so now I determine that uh, there's nothing bigger T4 is pretty big, and I want to threaten to go in there, because it's a pretty big move. Isn't J12 bigger? Let's see, where is J12? Ah, oh, for me to play? Um, let's see, yes, yes, J, uh, J12 would be bigger. In fact, uh, J12 is uh, the move I probably should have played. So yes, Rukas is uh, very good. This is the move I should have played, because at this point, capturing four stones is... Uh, pretty close to Sente at this point in the game. Now, earlier in the game, you know, f just capturing four stones uh, might not be Sente. But uh, because we're so late into Yose, it is Sente. So, you know, uh, Sente is a relative concept. So he's going to have to defend. And uh, no matter how he defends, I'm still going to be able to get, you know, additional reductions. All these in Sente. So, yes, J12 should have been my move. But I do T4 thinking that he'll respond, and he doesn't. He plays uh, this F5 move, which is another really difficult move to figure out. You know, is it 100% sente? Does white have to respond to it? It's not an easy question. I choose to uh, respond up there and uh, defend simply because it's pretty big, although once again, J12 is still bigger. And now this is a very interesting move. Normally, pushes like this are only worth one point. But in this case, pushing is the correct move. Why? Why is uh, pushing at M7, even though it doesn't look that huge, why is it correct here? Yeah, double Atari follow-up. No, there is. Exactly. I have to fix the cut. There's all sorts of ladders. Yep. So it's Sente. So even though it's not that large, because it's Sente, it's, uh, it's perfectly fine to play. Black has just gained one point by, well, reducing me one point, and kept sente. As long as you can keep that sente and reduce your opponent, as a general rule, you're doing great in Yose. So I have to spend another move. And now he plays a pretty bad move. This is uh, not that large. Uh, he really shouldn't be playing it. E17 just isn't that big. And so I play this move, trying to uh, get in there, which is uh, you know somewhat sente. And then I play a O15, which is also kind of sente. Yeah, and J12 is still screaming at everyone. Yeah, the well, so the initial move, um, no, it's not 100% sente because he can live even if I cut. However, he has to spend. Yes, he can. However, 
if I do cut, he has to uh, spend another move in here to uh, ensure that it's 100% alive. And then after I go up here, I can do all of this fun stuff and uh, make bad times for black. So, yeah, even if he do, even if he does manage to somehow play something different than uh, his J13 response and manages tiny life, it's a huge reduction, and all I, I get it all in Sente. So I play a N15 thinking that he has to fill, but he doesn't. He very very smartly plays a J12, which I should have played long ago, and so he's uh, now then he plays a H13, which is great, and so instead of just you know simply defending. Here he has expanded his eye space in the center to even that if I even though if I split him he'll still be fine. So then I uh, go into the corner, but uh, this is actually a well this is a sente move actually because he didn't respond. Now normally this would not be sente. This is kind of an illusory move because the cut uh, doesn't work directly. The cut doesn't work directly. But, let's see what happens. Suddenly, black only has one eye. <laughs> yep. So, thus, he does respond. And then I play here. This is a really big move. And then I decide to uh, take uh, S2. Now this is an important point, a little bit more subtle but important. Just playing a O5 is a, a big move itself. Because if he plays here afterwards, he uh, can no longer play O6. If we look, he can't do this anymore. You know, this uh, this doesn't work. Uh, black is just going to die here. Whereas before he can play like this. And this one little move, now what most people will do is they'll immediately, you know, defend the stone by playing right here. And sometimes this can be a great move. I'm not saying that, you know, playing P5 in this kind of situation is always bad. But in this situation, it's not necessarily uh, required yet. Because just playing O6 has been uh, worth something in value. Because let's see what happens. If white plays the same O5 move now with this exchange already in place and black responds here white needs to respond if he wants his uh, O5 move to have any value white needs to spend another move so it's a little difference but it's uh, still nevertheless it can add up to a lot so now I take this S2 move and he responds and I capture, and finally he takes this uh, a6 sente move, and uh, this basically uh, finishes up most of Yosei in this game. So let's go on to uh, the second game, which I think we have time for before uh, we have to head out. There's the uh, most of the rest of the Yosei is uh, pretty small stuff. So here is uh, the second game that uh, I was playing. Well, right. If uh, there's all sorts of there's all sorts of reasons why professionals will uh, leave particular situations until the very end. Usually, it's because either a they're not sure that they can get it in sente, or b the move isn't sente to begin with. So you know some moves don't become sente until later in the game, and so being able to correctly determine when a move becomes sente is an incredibly difficult skill to uh, learn for for anyone. So. This is the next game, and uh, I want everyone to uh, take a look at the board. Yeah, <laughs> those large captures. Yeah, well, you know, taking a large capture is just raw points at the end of the day. It doesn't affect, if it's just a capture of stones, and it doesn't affect the overall position, then it's just those points, period. You know, there's no future, there's no additional gain. But uh, So let's take a look at this game. Uh, the game is just really entering into Yosei. The positions have really been stabilized, and now uh, it's White's turn. So uh, let's see what uh, what should White do? Any ideas? White to play? Uh, 
Are there any really valuable Sente moves that are just screaming, this is 100% Sente? Black has to respond, period. Let's see, we have this. We have D16. Well, D16 is reverse Sente. And it is worth some points. But it's not gigantic. I mean, you know, we, we, D16 is nicely sized. You know, four or five points. But it's not monstrous yet. So what are moves that are, you know, almost 100% Sente and uh, gain you points? Let's see, we have N12. Yeah, N12 is a fine move. Great. You can uh, uh, make yourself some more points with that. And I, I should note, this is very important. You know, these forcing moves, you should not play them too early. Remember the original comment I said about Aji Keshi? If you play moves like N12 too early in the game, all you're going to do is make your opponent's position stronger. The, only, the time to play moves like N12 is right when there are no invasions left inside that area and you don't foresee any uh, co-threats occurring in the last part of uh, the endgame. Because, you know, this is a great co-threat that you're using, and, you know, if your opponent's position is open, and this just makes them stronger, then sure, you might gain one point, or you might reduce them one point, but, you know, you're also uh, ruining a potential invasion. So these moves like N12, you have to play uh, properly timed. So at this point, it's fine to play. Oh, someone also said uh, P7. Yeah, P7 is pretty big. Absolutely. No arguments there. P7, uh, B10. Ah, B10 is another very large choice. Yes. Absolutely. All of which are uh, superb choices. Great. I think everyone's become uh, very good at uh, determining which, uh, yeah, 07, P7 are pretty similar in idea. So I think everyone's become uh, relatively proficient at determining, uh, you know, which are the, the biggest few moves. And really, you know, until, uh, until uh, you really start to get into, you know, the top of the queues, you know, 5Q and uh, stronger, just, if you just understand, uh, you know, if you just understand that these are the biggest four Yosei moves, and if you also understand that I have to play the Sente moves first, and then I have to look if, you know, there are any reverse Sente or any uh, Gote with Sente continuation moves, if you just focus on that, you will become amazingly strong at uh, Yose compared to your uh, compatriots. So I actually... <laughs> so I actually played uh, S8 in this game because uh, I had a very interesting strategy. And this is another interesting part to go into about Yose. These particular situations, uh, and this will be probably the last concept that I really discuss in this lecture, this uh, particular kind of situation of third line stones bumping heads, it happens, I'm sure all of you know, it happens all the time in every game you ever play in Go, ever. You will have third line stones bumping up against each other. And then at some point you'll have players doing second line moves to try and, you know, crunch into your opponent's area. Right, right. So the drop down here would actually be a very, very huge move for Black. In fact, if Black were to do this, I might even have to respond to it because, you know, there's this really threatening S5 peep. So even if I could live without responding to it, it's very, very painful for me. I mean, so, you know, I might have to respond to it, which is very, very frustrating for me. I don't like that at all, which is another reason. So S8 becomes what? Why? So what type of move is S8? Anyone? Yes. Reverse Sente. It's a reverse Sente move. If he took it, I would probably respond. But so I'm taking it. And my move is a Gote move, but it has some really interesting follow-ups. Yeah, so it also has some follow-ups. So the normal idea, of course, is to play T9. But in this particular situation, I have another idea. Yes, S10, exactly. White has an ulterior motive here. If black allows me to get S10, that screws with his entire position. He can't let this happen. This is uh, absurd. Right? It's an evil clamp. So Black ignores it first with L5, L17, which is a great Sentai move. He can absolutely take L17. And then M17, which is also a great Sentai move. And then he plays uh, M3, which is also a great Sentai move. 
And then he plays this really, really, really interesting move. And uh, this is why Yosei is such a fascinating concept. Because you find moves like these. And uh, this is a move that I had totally missed. But it's a fascinating, fascinating move. And it really screwed me up. So white has to respond here. And then black comes up. And white has no choice but to give him the four stones. Because if I don't, bad things happen. <laughs> no, no, you're right. And d16 is very large. All right, so this would happen, which of course is game-endingly bad. So no, no, I agree. D7, d16 is huge, but uh, s8 is uh, even still. You know, all black gains is uh, eight points, and eight points is very huge. Well, a little more, maybe more like ten points. Ten points is huge, but I would argue that uh, s8 is uh, just as big, if not even bigger. So, you know, it's a matter of determining what's really the biggest. So he captures four stones. And now it's uh, my turn again. And someone suggested S16, which is a great move. And black responds. And now, uh, what do you guys think? What should, uh, what should white do? Let's see. B10 is still staring at us. I, yeah, B10 is getting pretty big. Absolutely, that's huge, you'll say. We have a suggestion for S10. Lots of suggestions for S10. Ah, well, in our game, I do S10 because uh, B10, you know, B10 might be Sente. I mean, maybe B10 is Sente. Will Black respond? Mm, it's pretty big if he doesn't. It's true. Maybe he'll respond. Maybe. But we can't be sure he'll respond. But S10, you know, there's no way in the world. Period that black cannot respond to it. So, you know, it's even determining within Sente what really is Sente. So because black doesn't like descending, he has to play a move like R9, which makes white rather happy, because I get that reduction. And then I choose to play, uh, rather than uh, B10, <laughs> yeah, rather than B10, I choose to play uh, this move, which uh, mm, it's uh, difficult to say which is necessarily better than the other. So black takes a sente move at uh, R5, and then he makes a big mistake, and he takes this move. And the problem is, this move isn't sente. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bad mistake. That's not a sente move. You know, players play these kinds of moves all the time, and other players will always just, oh, respond, and oh, I have to save my stone. White doesn't need to save his stone here. I've already reduced black. Just because he captures that one stone doesn't mean that the whole reduction has been lost. I have this uh, gigantic move at B6. The, I get to end with Incente, which is huge. And then, like someone suggested, I play N12, and he has to respond, and it's okay, now we're, we're at this situation. So, any ideas uh, what should uh, White to do? What are, what are the really big moves that are left? Let's see, we have uh, P7. Yeah, P7 is looking monstrous. <laughs> you got it first. <laughs> uh, B10 is still there. Oh... One. Oh, O1 oh, is definitely an interesting idea. O1 oh, and O2, oh, absolutely. There is a, a lot of Aji with those stones. But uh, in this case, I chose to do a B10 first. Because B10 is uh, actually larger than it initially looks. You know, at first it looks like it's a fairly sizable move, but the key to really understand a move's true size is to look at the continuations that come after it. So black takes this move, and then if I don't stop it by losing, and I have to lose Sente to stop it, if I don't stop it, he can get this move. And suddenly, all sorts of new points suddenly appear on the board. This becomes a point, this becomes a point, this becomes a point, this becomes a point. And compared to me having B11, this becomes a point, this becomes a point. I mean, there's all sorts of uh, new points that uh, begin to appear which angers me. So I play a B10, which is rather large, and he captures my three stones, which is a sizable move, absolutely. It uh, not only captures the three stones, but it threatens to take uh, H6, which I don't really like that much. But uh, I play this move, which uh, people have been asking for, which is a great reduction move. You know, uh, it connects to both, both sides, so it's a great Yosei move. And black takes this move, 
which uh, he needs to take, I suppose, but uh, still, it's very, very painful. And now I take uh, this move. And at first glance, T15 doesn't really look like necessarily 100% uh, Sente, but it has a really interesting follow-up, which has, uh, what should uh, white do if black doesn't do anything? Yeah, S13. S13 is uh, really rather painful. Because if black plays up here, white goes here. And black is uh, not very happy. I mean, black can, sure, black can, you know, crawl himself under to life. But uh, no one is going to say that uh, black is particularly thrilled with this turn of events. So black actually, uh, well, actually, yeah, <laughs> and it's not even alive, right? I was being silly. It's not even alive. So what actually black needs to do is just this. And then he has to make horrible tiny life like this, which is, of course, you know, impossible. Now, so this is an interesting, uh, an interesting look into, another interesting look into Yose. So with this uh, Q14 move, what Black has done is he's defended this S13 weakness, but uh, rather than simply, you know, responding at S13 himself, which is 100% Gote, he responds at uh, Q15, which is actually uh, potentially Sente. Because if I uh, come in now, he can uh, capture me. And, yeah, he's threatening me. So he's trying to steal back Sente. So I decide that I'm going to play uh, O16 to try and connect all of my groups up. And he plays the very large uh, M2, which is uh, really uh, moving along, you'll say. And then I play this move anyway. Now, this is another interesting part of uh, Yosei. And so the question is, uh, for those of you that uh, have read this out, o uh, S13 doesn't work, and yet I still played it. Why? Why would I still play it if it doesn't work? Yeah, so sometimes playing an internal move is very, very good in terms of creating forcing moves. You can, uh, with a single sacrifice stone, you can uh, force your opponent to play multiple moves around it, uh, giving you profit. Now, in this case, my move actually isn't that important. It doesn't really matter that much because I can take, uh, in general, I, can, I could probably take uh, Q13 in Sente anyway. However, what I wanted to prevent was this from happening. Let's say I just played Q13, and then uh, Black decided to, uh, say, Tanuki. Well, right, there's a very interesting ko. But uh, forgetting that uh, ko for a moment, if uh, white does play here, uh, black might choose to play here now and uh, give up the stone. And this would have meant that my uh, Q13 move was gote. Even though I got a great follow-up, Q13 would have still been gote. And I don't want that. So by forcing him to choose to play S14 first, now he has to play this. I mean, now there's no possible way he could not play it. So then I play a, a big move, and he plays a big move. And now I make a uh, mistake, a rather large mistake. I've already made a large mistake, actually, because he can cut off my uh, 06 stone with a endgame Tessigy. Any ideas? Who? What's, uh, what's the Tessigy that uh, Black has here? Yeah, P6. Very, very useful testigy to know. And white becomes very sad. But he plays this move first, which is fine. Big sente threat. And so now I'm very sad, because he has uh, successfully uh, cut that off. And so now I take uh, E1. Now, E1 itself doesn't look that huge, does it? I mean, it's only, you know, this little thing on uh, the first line. And uh, the question is, why, uh, why would I play it right now? Why play E1 right now? Yeah, F1 is a... Uh, yeah, exactly, it's reverse Sente. 
So if he gets uh, f1, he can take f1 in sente whenever he likes. And I don't particularly like that very much. So by taking f1, by taking e1, not only have I gave, given myself two more points, but I've also reduced him and I've stolen sente from him, which is pretty valuable itself. So then he plays a uh, m1. And his idea here is to do a, a rather interesting testigy. His idea with this move is to play this, which is a really, really cool Yose testigy. And it would uh, anger me a lot. <laughs> uh, you know, black can't be separated. And white has to do something like this. And now uh, white is uh, very, very sad that black has gotten this great reduction against him. So I can actually respond like this. So by playing uh, M1, he has ensured that uh, he uh, keeps Sente. And then he takes B11, which is Gote, but really, really big Gote. But since there's nothing bigger left for me to play, I, just, I decide that uh, B8 is uh, pretty big. But now he's made a bit of a mistake because his shape is weak. And, uh, well, yeah, there's still a13, which is great. But uh, a3 is another weakness. However, he makes a mistake again here. Right, it became Seki, but does it have to become Seki? You know, life and death is critically important in Endgame. It, uh, life and death tells you if a move is Sente or not. And so you cannot be strong at Endgame un until you are strong at uh, life and death. So uh, what uh, what should have Black done here? Is there any way he can make it not Seki? Or is it just going to be Seki no matter what? Is there just no way to prevent it? Well, this can make it actually a very interesting Ko. So if Black wants to make Ko, he can do this. But... Uh, Yeah, now it just becomes Seki. There's really no way to stop either Seki or Ko. So that was a huge gain for me. And then, yeah, not really much else of importance. And then the game, for the most part, ends. Hmm? Oh, Black was uh, one of my friends. He's a little bit weaker than me, but uh, we play every now and again. So uh, this was a, a basically just a, a introductory part into a uh, endgame, and uh, you know one of the problems with having an introductory thing on endgame is that no matter what you do, it always gets more advanced than you intend, because Yose is just a stupidly, stupidly, if I haven't said it enough, a stupidly complex subject. So um, if uh, there is interest, next time we will move on to we talked about more general concepts in this in this one in terms of. Uh, you know, how do we discover what is a reverse sente move, what is a gote with sente continuation move, and even if you're not 100% on all of these concepts yet, don't worry, that's fine. Um, we can, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, something that takes multiple times to really uh, instill what each of these are. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, pieces on them on, uh, uh, what was it, Sensei's Library has uh, some uh, interesting articles on it, which I think are pretty decent, if you wanted to take a look at it. But uh, so if there's interest next time, rather than just looking at the theory and, you know, of uh, generally looking into uh, which moves look big, next time we're going to go really into, uh, if there's interest, the nuts and bolts of Endgame in terms of, you know, how big is X move in Yose specifically in points and then comparing them against one another. Because uh, it's amazing, you know, how big moves can be and how small they can appear. Looks can be very, very, very deceiving in Endgame and Go. Oh, and I see there's also interest for a test G lecture. <laughs> um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do a test G lecture. I don't know. I'll, I'll uh, see what there's interest in. So yeah, uh, please, uh, you know, throw me a message, throw me a line, tell me uh, if, uh, you know, what, uh, if you'd be interested in an Endgame lecture that uh, really goes into uh, how to evaluate in terms of points what a move is. But uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this lecture. Um, I, uh, Yose is a very, very difficult topic to do lectures on because it's just so complex. 
but I uh, hope you uh, learned something, and I will uh, see all of you next time. So, uh, farewell. <laughs>